Hey, and welcome to our Kivi tutorial where we talk about formatting. In part three today, we talk about labels and how you can change the background color and the color of the font, and also how you can round the corners of your label. Check it out. This part of the code is just a Python code that triggers the GUI, so we won't be talking about this. All the action will be happening here. What I have so far is a grid layout with one column and a label in there that says some text in my label. So let's have a look at what that looks like. There you go, some text in my label. And this is a label um, in my grid layout. Now there's a number of things we can improve and we will go through them step by step. The first thing for me to do is to make this text a little bit bigger because I can hardly read it. So font size. That's easy enough because the property is actually called font size and you can give it any size you like. And this is in pixels. So give it 50 pixels high and that gives me a bigger text. And this is cool. Now I want to change this to a nicer color. So how do I change the font color? So there are a few things to know about uh, the color. We use the RGBA format, which stands for red, green, blue and then alpha which is the transparency factor so if you set this to 100 percent it is not transparent at all it's completely opaque all your colors are completely visible the other thing to know about the rgba values is that they have to be between zero and one now usually um, you will find rgba values um, between 0 and 255. So if we want to adjust those values such that they fit the Kivi structure or the Kivi values, um, you need to take that number and divide it by 255 to make it between 0 and 1. So let's have a look. To change the font color, we change color. That's the property. I found that a bit confusing. I thought color would be the color of the label, and therefore the background color, but it is not. Color is the color of the text of the label. And I found a pretty funky color um, on the internet, and it had RGBA values of 71, 73, and 115. So those were my RGB values, not RGBA. It doesn't have an A value here. Um, so how do I convert these to Kivi values or values that uh, Kivi accepts? As I said, you need to divide by 255. That converts it to a percentage between 0 and 1. And then I need to add the A value, which for me is 1. OK, so. Let's have a look. And I now have this kind of blue grayish text instead of the white I had before. OK, that's pretty cool. Um, except that there's a few things I want to change. One, I want to see where my label ends, because um, currently it looks like everything is one label. Um, but I want to see a label sitting within a screen. When I said screen, I meant uh, grid layout. Apologies, I need to be more accurate. I don't have a screen in this particular app. I just have a grid layout as my root. And within this grid layout, I have a label. And therefore, I want to see where this label ends because I have used padding. So that means my label does not take up the entire grid layout. And I want to see where it ends. So the first thing to do is to create a border. Now, a label is a widget on which you actually cannot draw. So you can't just draw a border on a label. You have to create a canvas first. You can only draw on a canvas. So canvas before creates the canvas before it creates the label, if you like. So on there, there is a property called color. And then we define the the um, the way we define the color. So that's RGBA. You can actually do it in different ways in Kivi, but we are going to use RGBA because that is what we're familiar with now, and we know how to convert the colors to between zero and one. Now let's say the border I want is a blue one. So red is zero, green is zero, blue is one, so 100%, and I want it to be fully opaque. Now, this actually doesn't 
do anything yet. All we have done so far is define the color. We have not drawn the border yet. We now need to tell Kiffy what to do with this color we have just defined. So a border that is a line, really. Um, and so I want to set the width of that line to say two, two pixels wide. And then I need to tell Kivi where this line is going. So with this line, I want to draw a rectangle. And this rectangle needs to go around the label. So I need to make sure it has the same origin, so the X, Y position, and the same width and the same height as my label. Now, I am within label in my Kivi file. So to get the label or to refer to the label, I can use self. So from the label, I take the X value and the Y value of the origin. I then also give it the same width and the same height. So all I do is I pick up the origin values and the width and the height from the label and then tell Kivi to draw a line around that. So to draw, well, not to, to use a line to draw a rectangle of those proportions. So that then should draw a border and a blue one for that matter around my label. So let's have a look. Here we go. If we've got a blue border around my label and now you can see where the padding comes in. So the padding, let me scroll up a little bit. I use padding of 100, 200. So I have 100 pixels padding from the, the edge of the grid layout um, horizontally and vertically, I have 200. Okay, so if I change this to 300, for example, my label should become narrower, well, not narrower, uh, thinner, so the vertical height should be less. You see now that it's impossible to have 300. Um, so let's put it back. So if I put it back to 100, for example, you'll find that this is a much bigger label as in the distance vertically from the edge is less. Okay. So I'm going to change this back to 200. So this is my label. Now the next thing I would like to change is um, I think the text, I like that color, but it doesn't really stand out. Um, and so maybe I should make the background much lighter than, uh, than black. So let me try gray, see what that does. So the background color, the background color is very similar to the border. So you start with canvas before you then again, going to define your color as RGBA, but I'm going to try uh, a gray and see if that stands out a little bit better. Um, now, again, I've just defined a color. I haven't done anything with it yet. So to draw a background, I'm going to have to draw a rectangle, not a line in this case, but a rectangle, a full rectangle. And I want the size and the position of this rectangle to be that of the label. So if my rectangle takes up the entire space of the label, and if I then color the rectangle, I effectively colored my label. So that is what we're doing. So the position of my rectangle needs to be that of the label, and the size of my rectangle needs to be that of the label. Okay. So let's see if that gives me a background color. It does. So now I have a nice gray background color. Now, so that looks nice, except that, of course, my border has now disappeared. I used to have a nice blue border and that's gone. So let me try and explain to you why that is. That's because I have two conflicting instructions here, if you like. I've got canvas before where I draw the border. And then I have canvas before again, where I draw the rectangle, but they, this, this one is the latest one. So this one happens first. And then this one basically overwrites that. Now you think, ah, oh, okay. So if I switch these two around, um, then I will draw the background first and then the border around it and that will work. But if we do that, um, you will see that actually the border will show up 
but the background disappears. So let me show you what happens if you just change the order. So I take that away here and I stick that in here. So now I have the background color first and then the border. And unfortunately, it then does the background color first, but you don't see that because the canvas before instruction then overrides that with the border. So changing the order doesn't help. So what can you do? Um, there's another instruction called canvas after. So what you can do is you can draw the background color first and then draw the um, border afterwards. And then you end up with your blue border and your gray background. Okay, so that's where we are. The other thing I wanted to show you is how to round the corners uh, of your label. Okay, let's do that. So to round the corners, you're going to actually have to uh, change the way you do the background color. So in the background color here, you draw, you define the color, so that will be the same. But instead of a rectangle, you want a rounded rectangle. So I can just copy this. But instead of rectangle, I want that to be a rounded rectangle. And of course, I then need to give it a another parameter that defines how rounded this needs to be. So that is a parameter or property called radius. And you can give that a value. You have to play around with the values a little bit to see what, what you prefer. Now, it's important to understand that this effectively is doing the same thing as the background. But instead of drawing a rectangle, it draws a rounded rectangle. So this is the same thing as coloring the background, but just using a rounded rectangle instead of a rectangle. So I can comment out um, all this here because this is no longer needed. So let's just comment this out and see what we get. So now you have the rounded corners. Of course, now this border doesn't look nice anymore. So I'm just going to take out the border so that you can properly see the rounded corners. So the border I'm going to take out. So if you take out the border, you now have your label with the rounded corners. And you can play around with this radius. So I picked 20, which to me looks nice, but I don't know if you say 100. I don't actually don't know what that does. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it just depends on how round you want this to be. Okay, that's it for this part of the tutorial. See you in the next bit. Thanks. Bye.